day to all of our social media uh, peeps. Um, we just love that you've come to join us today. I'm here with uh, Stephen Powell, and he's on the screen right now. I'll introduce him more in a moment. But if you could just let us know uh, where you're from and uh, give a greeting, we'd love to be able to um, just connect with you and uh, cheer you on as we bring this important message today. And so, um, yeah, and tell your friends about it. I think it's um, a conversation that is going to be very valuable as we look at uh, Stephen's journey in the prophetic. And so I know that God's really breathing on the prophetic right now, and it's really important to, to get certain things in a proper place. And so we're going to be uh, talking about things like that. So tell your friends about it. Uh, share this out. It'll be wonderful to... Um, uh, see them grow through it as well. I see that we've got um, people from Alberta, Canada. That's where my children live. That's awesome. Uh, Bradford, UK, the Philippines, Phoenix, Belize. I've lived in Belize, so that's that's cool. Minnesota, Rhode Island. You're all coming in there. It's, uh, South Africa, wonderful from all over the world. So this is going going to be great. So Stephen Powell is my guest today. It's wonderful to have you with us, Stephen. And uh, Stephen is a prophet, and we're going to talk today about his journey as a prophet, not only in the prophetic, but as a prophet, because. I don't think many realize what it takes, the grooming that it takes, the the character building, the fires that a prophet goes through in order to be completely yielded to God. And so we're going to talk about that journey. So, um, uh, Stephen, you and your wife, Amanda, live here in mm -hmm. Maricopa, clo close by us, and you have uh, four wonderful children and we're really excited about all that um, God has for you and your family, the way he's been uh, using you. But we first met just a couple of years ago in the midst of a, a very intense assignment. Maybe we'll get into that later. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, we, um, we connected then. And, uh, and I discovered that, yeah, we've got here a, a true man of God, a man who loves the Lord, um, who is having uh, very uh, real prophetic encounters. Um, but there were some things that we um, would clash on at times, um, you know, needing understanding in that. So there was some tension in our relationship and those things yeah. uh, got worked out, and some beautiful things came forth out of that. So yeah. we're just being raw and real with you, audience, today. We're just we're just pulling out the plugs. We're going to be really honest, speaking from our heart. Uh, we'll share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I think oftentimes you hear... You know, people in ministry get on a platform and everything looks perfect where behind the scenes, God's at work and he's doing he's doing a refining work in people's hearts and lives. So uh, we want to share yeah. our journey in that. So, Stephen, as we're beginning, uh, can you share uh, with our audience a little bit about yourself, your ministry and how you began to identify this prophetic call in your life? Yeah, thank you for having me today. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a journey. Um, I'm a generation uh, Pentecostal preacher uh, on my both my mother and my father's side. Um, I grew up. I was born and raised in Alaska, and I really feel like I get it, it's it's uh, it's like in my family line the prophetic. My mother, strong prophetic gifting, um, is uh, is the broadcast delayed? No, it's it's on. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm seeing you on the left hand side, so I'll just keep going, I guess. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. But my mother was a strong prophet, uh, I believe, from birth. You know, many of us have giftings from birth, you know, like Jeremiah called from the womb. And uh, she began to manifest her prophetic gifting very young. She would often know when going to go home to be with the Lord before they did or other you know traumatic events so um she had a a believing mother but a father that wasn't a believer so he was freaked out you know in the 60s thought she had esp um and and all kinds of stuff but uh so i think it's in my my family line but it began to manifest in my life very young 
Um, it showed up in the in the kind of warfare that I would deal with, even as a ch child. I can remember uh, wretches when I was a child when I would have night tears. There was one year where 25 days in a row, pretty much in a, an entire year, I would wake up with. Um, so I was very very sensitive to spiritual things, and oftentimes. Someone who has night tears, as you know, uh, Patricia, as a child, is a lot of times an indication of a prophetic gift. Um, but I didn't really begin to have supernatural encounters or prophetic experiences until I gave my heart to the Lord as a teenager and until I got spirit filled. Um, whenever I got filled with the spirit, um, I developed a prayer life. I was very much impacted by uh, people like Benny Hinn and old, old writers like Andrew Murray and Ian Bounds. I loved Ian Bounds, his stuff on prayer. So pretty much from the moment I got saved as a teenager, I, I grew up in church, but I really committed my life to the Lord as a teenager in youth group. The moment I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost as a teenager, I just was very zealous for the things of God. I didn't want to party you know, with the other kids. I did other things that other kids at school were doing. I just wanted to come home every day and pray and spend time with the Lord. And, wow. and I was kind of like, you know, a weird kid in some people's eyes. Um, but my parents, you know, who were both believers and they, they were excited. They were like, wow, you know, we didn't even hardly have to lift a finger. And he's just following the Lord. And, um, you know, so there was just that grace, that, that that sovereign grace and glory that was on my life from a young age. And, and it's it's all glory to Jesus. I didn't do anything. You know, it wasn't it wasn't me just being a, a, a good person. It was just the grace of God that compelled me to that lifestyle. Um, but it came to uh, it came to a head when I was 19 years old. That's when I had my first open eyed visitation of Jesus. Jesus appeared to me wow. in my my home in Alaska when I was on a month stretch right after I graduated high school where I was spending day and night with the Lord. I, uh, I didn't know. I, I knew I was called to ministry, but I didn't know necessarily what to do after high school. So I asked my parents um, if I could just take time on board and they were like, sure, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, I basically fell away for months and just that, that devotion to the Lord in this is really what opened up up the realm of supernatural encounters that encounter with jesus um the manifestation of the spirit upon been completely different he actually anointed my head with oil had me kneel down anointed my head with oil the oil ran all over my body and from the moment that oil i've had uh an increase in prophetic gifting in, in, in thing and whatnot so uh, in a nutshell that's up to 19. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. Now, we're going to eventually, I just want to let our viewers know um, that there were some things that happened along the way that, mm -hmm. um, that brought great wounding and actually had ramifications mm -hmm. later on. So we're going to go back to that later. But before we yeah. um, do, I, I want you to move forward now because um, you... Um, uh, were in your church and um, you had been prophesying right within the church and you had been mm -hmm. working in the church and then um, an evangelist came by and you ended up moving and you want to share that whole part of your journey yeah um you basically when the lord appeared to me at 19 he called me at the end of that encounter he wilderness he said he said those words i'm calling you into a wilderness and later on, I began to study, you know, what that entailed. And I found that many men or women of God that God used in Scripture, oftentimes when they'd have a supernatural sort of ordaining or commissioning encounter, they would have to go into a season. of So I went into this wilderness period. I thought, you know, as a young man, it would only last, you know, a few months. It ended up lasting 11 years. <laughs> um, it lasted all of my 20s. And that was actually incredibly difficult time for me because uh, I was anointed. I, uh, the gifting began to surface. Um, I, I wanted more than anything my ministry and, and to preach, but the Lord just would not allow that. And, and I look 
back now and I thank God for that because I was a man. I was able to develop as a father, as a husband, a season where the Lord was like, you're going to serve in the local church without a platform, without, you know, a, a, a big public platform. And that built character in me. And I know that the things that God did in me in that season has held me even through the hard times that I've gone through since going full time in ministry, because I have roots that the Lord built in me of character, relationship with him and also my wife and my family. You know, me and my wife, I feel like we have such an unbond in relationship. I mean, that has been crucial for everything that I've gone through since. But just fast forwarding. Um, yeah, I was actually janitor of the church that I was serving in, and an evangelist came through my hometown um, in 2012, and he called me out of the crowd, actually, prophesied over me, said, hey, I see my mantle, I see my anointing on you, you know, who are you? And he started just prophesying all these things, and uh, you know, he didn't normally do this, but he got words and said, you know, what are you doing next? Next week, why don't you just come with me to the next town and just come and serve, you know, and just be in the meeting. So, you know, from that moment to travel with him, three weeks from that point, I was in South Korea with him, ended up being in South Korea for a month. And it just sort of went, went, went off from there. So I spent the next three years from 2012 to 2015, just mentoring, being mentored by him on the road and just uh, sort of doing, you know, on the job training, revivalist training, you know, around the world. And then in 2015, right when I turned 30, um, I was ordained by him and, and we moved down south and uh, me, me and my family to South Carolina where he was based. And we started full time ministry and it was a total faith move. <laughs> I had nothing on the calendar. I didn't know anybody, but God just supernaturally filled in my schedule and and made the, the necessary connections and yeah, um, it was uh, it was it was quite amazing. Uh, from the moment that the Lord launched us into full time ministry, the glory just kept increasing. Uh, the encounters, the the miracles, the signs and wonders. So we're in a bit of a whirlwind there. From I would say 2015 to, to 2019, it was very very powerful. Um, but then yeah, a, as you know, some things took a, a hard turn there. Some of the the assignments that the Lord put on, on me, you know, towards the end of that season that I'm with, which is how I met you, um, because you were very instrumental in helping me to deal with that. So, right, love you. So um, <laughs> the the evangelist on, and we're not going to mention names here right now. Right. I don't think that's important to yeah. the viewers. But the evangelist that. Um, that uh, called you to come alongside of him and to mm -hmm. serve with him was um, very anointed, very anointed, especially yeah. in the area of uh, signs and wonders and miracles and glory manifestations. Um, and those yes. connections um, in the spirit with those things like the healings, they were very authentic. Uh, yes. The revelations were authentic revelations. And uh, this evangelist was known worldwide, um, you know, mm -hmm. just um, uh, really known. So it was a person that I could understand why, you know, you would love to be mentored under that anointing. I just want our viewers to know that, um, that just because someone has an anointing uh, doesn't mean necessarily that their character is in line uh, with the Lord and his righteousness and his ways. Just want to give you a heads up. A lot of times people are confused about that. They think, well, you know, he's anointed or she's anointed, so everything they do must be okay. No, uh, the anointing is what the Holy Spirit manifests through a person. That's the Holy yeah. Spirit. But your character is something else. That's 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 for you to manage. Um, the the uh, gifts of the Spirit, the yeah. healings of God, the uh, signs and wonders that that your faith attaches to. That is um, that is in response to a person's faith. The Holy Spirit honors the faith, but um, there still is our character issues that have to be looked at. That the Holy Spirit's constantly working on. Um, and we have an opportunity to respond rightly to him or not. So I just wanted to say that um, because um, when I met you, there had been um, some uh, issues and um, 
you had of course been ministering in the glory when you you went out on the road and doors opened up for you there was a lot of glory in the meetings there was a lot of a grace there was a lot of miracles all of that and then yeah. um you you came into a season where the Lord was showing you like a, a revealing of things that were going on behind the scenes and you were picking up like judgment words and spending mm -hmm. some time in the old Testament. Can you share some of your history on that? Well, it's amazing. Um, you know, you can, you can hear very, very clearly from the Lord. Lord, but oftentimes, and this is why a, to go through a journey of real cleansing and purifying and maturation uh, in the things of God, because if you're not careful, you can mix, you know, your own soul with some of those pure words from the Lord that are coming from your spirit. And in our soul, you know, it can be a mess at times. You know, there's good things in there. There's your personality that God's given you all that, but there's wounds and there's there's hurts that you carry moving forward. Your your view of things, your outlook on things the way you interpret her. So, you know, what I found, Patricia, was that when we came to this season, this this it's really continued even to now and it's continuing, but it's a season of exposure, especially in our movement where the Lord was dealing with things that have, have not been dealt with for a long time. Now is the time I'm dealing with them. Um, whenever that season hit, and, we, and, and you and I had to a uh, case um, that was very difficult, but ultimately I believe God got and his will was accomplished with it. You know, I felt like an anointing closure was released, not just for the people that God was dealing with in sin, but for all, including myself. And I felt things were exposed in my heart, in my life, in my ministry, predated ever, you know, when, when, when I met this evangelist. So the Lord had to take me the last few years where I had to deal with with things that were unresolved. I had to deal with things, even going by youth. And I don't know if you wanted me to address that now at, at this yeah, point. Yeah, we might go, things... go, go into that in just a moment. What I, what I want to highlight is that um, a lot of times a person with a, a, a prophetic calling on their life, um, they have a very strong um, sense of justice in them, and a very yeah. strong sense of 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 righteousness and of what's right and wrong, good and evil. It's it's just like black and white, very clear. I'm not saying every prophet yeah. operates in that, but you'll find it a lot. Like John the Baptist, for example, um, you know, just uh, um, Elijah was another one. Very black and white, very uh, confrontational. That is a, you know, something yes. that you find a lot in, in prophets. So, um, if yes. you're watching this right now and you say, yeah, that's me, totally me, um, we're going to give you some really important insights in this next part of the conversation um, because that, that passion for justice is good. That is what is going to put action in you to make wrongs right and to, to bring yeah. forth the truth. I mean, it is a very, very great passion to have. God wants us all to want what's right, right? And so um, that is a good thing. But it also is a very um, a dangerous thing. It can be very dangerous as well, especially yes. if self-righteousness or pride gets in, or if there's woundedness in your life where you've been hurt, let's say by you know, people who have abused you in the past or something like that, and all of a sudden you're faced with it, and now you've got prophetic authority. You have to be very, very careful not to get all the brokenness that's on the inside of you fighting from the flesh. And that's where you and I, in the process of dealing with the exposure that had come with this particular yeah. evangelist, that's where we we had some tensions between us because yeah. there was things, I mean, I had a young prophet on my hand who was passionate about righteousness, which was really good. He mm -hmm. didn't want the abuses to continue. That was really good. Yeah. He was getting insight from the Lord that was really good. But then there was a bigger picture that needed to be looked at, like, 
um, there's a body involved um, that that needs to be nurtured and cared for, and it has to be carefully orchestrated, or it could blow up in a wrong way. Like all these different things that needed to be looked at, and also just theologically, yeah. mercy triumphs over judgment. So where do we draw that line? So these were big conversations that we had in the day, and they were uh, some of those conversations were tense. Um, yeah. Some of them were mm. strong. And I have to say, I think the conversations were healthy. And I just want to encourage mm. our viewers um, to not be afraid to have healthy conversations, even though they might be uh, strong. It might be strong confrontation that you have. As long as there's love in it, and as long as there's honor, I want to encourage you to have those and not just just go along with things when you don't really believe it. So um, Stephen was very honest with the way that he he was feeling at the time, very strong. Um, I was being very honest about where I was at the time, very strong. And so we would have, um, at, at times, a clash, but it was bringing things out on the table. And I, I, I think we shouldn't be afraid for those kind of conversations to take place as long as we're committed to love. So Amen. that took place and um, you and your wife ended up moving out here to Maricopa, yeah. which we're so happy to have you in the city and have your ministry here based out of here. And, um, you know, God uh, really uh, pulled all that together. It was kind of cool. We won't go into all the confirmations on that, but when you yeah. got here, there was things that, there was the aftermath of what had taken place that propelled some things in you that wanted to expose more things. And, and, you know, like the prophetic went kind of off a bit. And I, I want you to share from your perspective, how that looked to you. Yeah. Well, the, the case that we both worked on, it officially ended January 1st, 2020. That's when Dr. Brown released the, the statement for it. It was finalized. And then within a matter, I think, of six, seven weeks, COVID hit, you know, and the world just began to, to spin. So it was a very, you know, that was the context of it. It was a very chaotic, you know, time. Um, and, you know, I didn't really have time to, to, to really deal with these things, you know, the way I needed to. We just made the move in July of that year. And um, whenever I whenever I got here, uh, there was so much stuff that I was dealing with uh, in in my heart that yeah I made some I made some poor choices and I just couldn't hear I couldn't hear some of the voices that God had 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 put in my life. So God had to take me through a season where I just had to get along with Him, I had to spend time consistent with uh, consistently with Him. Um, every day. And then the Lord began to expose some of these. He, he began to give me words of wisdom. That that was a big uh, emphasis in this last season was wisdom. And, uh, you know, I believe, Patricia, for living in that the Lord is releasing like, like an Elijah type of anoint, anointing. Um, whenever you see a culture like ours, that has gone more and more after Jezebel, more after Baal, when there's more and more corruption, more and more idolatry in the nation, God will begin to release that Elijah anointing that's in his prophetic people. But, you know, it's interesting. Years ago, I had a dream, and in the dream, I was sitting at a table with Elijah, and Elijah was instructing me on that anointing i felt like this fire that was burning in me it was like so hot i felt like i was gripping the table i felt like i could break the table i was gripping it so hard i was just overcome with zeal it's like that scripture where jesus said you know he was eaten up with zeal for his house right but elijah there was a cup of of water cool water in front of me at this table and he said the war excuse me the fire that's been lit in you okay he said this in this dream has been lit for war okay to bring damage okay to the enemy's camp right so it's a warrior spirit that god's releasing but he said the fire that's in you if it's not tempered with being refreshed in the presence of god it can cause unnecessary damage to the body of christ so I'd never even considered that. A lot of times, like you said, Patricia, prophets are black and white. 
they they deal in absolutes. So a lot of times they only consider like one side of a matter. So this was this was actually a word of wisdom that I haven't really you know, I wasn't able to really come into, you know, except for like a few years of process. But the Lord was trying to tell me that the anointing that I was carrying, okay, had to be tempered with wisdom. And that's why God brought people like you into my life. And because of some things that had happened to me early on, I had developed a serious distrust in leaders, and I wasn't even aware of it. There was almost like an orphan spirit that was upon me that would not allow me to be fathered by true fathers and mothered by true mothers in the faith. And this is one of the pitfalls in the prophetic is Satan wants to isolate prophets. He wants to get them isolated. You know, First Kings 19, just like Elijah, he's driven in the wilderness, and the enemy wants to not only bury them, but he wants to bury their ministries. And uh, prophets, because of wounding, because of hurts, they end up committing almost like ministry suicide. They do things, and it's like Elijah, you know, in the wilderness. He, You know, there was like a spirit of suicide that came on him where he's like, I don't want to go on. And there were things that I was doing that was self-sabotaging, okay, um, because of some of those old wounds, that were still playing a role in my decisions and even how I interacted with leaders like you. So the one of the biggest things that he's done in my heart these last couple of years, Patricia, since I've been here in Maricopa, is he's exposed some of those things. He's revealed some of those things, and he's facilitated healing for my heart yes, and beautiful. healing for my soul in those areas. And that's allowed me actually to move into a greater place of trust with you. And God spoke this to me. He said, You can trust, okay, the people that I put in your life, okay, because it's actually me, okay, I put them in your life. And when you trust them, it's actually an extension of you trusting me. So there was so much fear. There was so much insecurity um, that I've had to deal with over the last few years. Um, But it's been so good. God has been so faithful to lead me into the healing that I've needed, uh, into addressing these issues that I've needed to address. But I have had to humble myself, and I have had to learn wisdom. Wisdom is huge. And a lot of times when you're in a strong anointing, I don't know if it's a guy thing or what, but we just want to we just want to charge, you know, we just want to charge and take out the enemy and take off the head of Goliath, you know. But uh, you know, it's like you're saying, you know, these things are are complicated and there's a lot of people involved a lot of times in these things. And it takes wisdom to see the assignment fulfilled in the Lord and 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 bring glory to the name of Jesus to represent him right, but also handle God's people with care. Amen. which is very important um, to the heart of God. So, so one last thing I want to say on this segment, Patricia, is I the Lord's moving me just from being like a blunt instrument in the kingdom, like raw power, raw glory, into being more of a leader, into being more of a seasoned, mature leader, which is ultimately, I believe, what I'm called to be. And uh, so I just thank God, you know, for your leadership. Thank God for your mentoring and your patience as well, because... You needed patience with me. Hallelujah. (laughs) I did. I actually did need patience with you. It was good. You worked a good work in me. Um, (laughs) I love you to bits. I love you to bits, Stephen. I do want to just uh, highlight over and over again on our phone calls back in the day, I'd say, wisdom from above is first pure, it's peaceful, it's gentle, it's easily entreated. I remember. You say, yeah, 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 but... And um, it was like fire and brimstone all the way with you back then. But um, yeah. but uh, we never want that fire to be lost either, because like uh, that's another thing. If you swing to the other side, you could lose it, too. I mean, yeah. you want to acknowledge the good things. And then, like you said, temper temper the things that need to be tempered. And that's what our Heavenly Father is so good at doing is being a daddy and taking yeah. care of those things. So, um, uh one of the things I want to highlight before I go into you sharing um, some of the things that took place in the past, and I believe that this uh, live stream is going to be healing for many of you. We're going to minister healing yeah. to many of you. Um, but you had received woundings growing up that we're going to talk uh, about. And then the evangelists that you worked with that you you were so honoring of and so admiring um, the anointing of God in his life. 
uh, you saw things in that ministry over time that were so incongruent. And then, yeah. of course, hearing reports of, you know, abusive activities and things like that was devastating. It was devastating to you. On top of that, when you started moving into the exposure of it, of course, there was big, gigantic hits on you during that yeah. time that brought wounding from uh, people that you didn't expect from yeah. from all kinds of sides. And I don't think anyone's ready for that. I, I remember telling you in the beginning, I said, you know, this is not going to be an easy journey. Like there's, this is, this is, you know, there's big powers behind this. There's going to be a lot that you're going to have to deal with. And I just want to say that for that, um, to all of you who are prophetic people out there, uh, you have to walk through the consequences of the assignment as well. And they're not all pleasant. They are not, you know, there's a big price to be paid sometimes for um, yes. bringing forth the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. the ways of the Lord. So there was those woundings on top of it as well. And then, um, you know, like you said, not being able to trust leaders. And I just want to comment on that too, is that you, you can never trust the arm of flesh, right? Like the arm of flesh will always fail you. So you always have to go to God and he will put good people in your in your um, lives, but you always yeah. want to be able to process you know, and that's really important. If you have a leader in your life that you, you have no ability to process with them, I really um, want you to go to prayer on that and maybe have a talk with them because it's really important that we we process through things and not just, you know, things. say this is the way, you know, do this or don't do this or whatever, have, have process. And if you're an older leader, you know, older generation, I mean, leader, um, I just want to encourage you to, um, you know, really process well with the younger generation because the younger generation does have a different mandate on them, a different calling. They've, they've grown up in a different generation than we do. So it takes a lot of listening, a lot of listening. So I just want to encourage you. But let's go back because um, you, you talked about um, your – your broken trust in leaders and this had to be healed and you've received healing and ongoing of course but um i believe that some of your story right now is going to cause some of our viewers to be opened up into memories even that they had kind of put off to the side but these these types of things are really worthy to be addressed and so we're going to pray at the end of this and encourage you to get deeper healing if you if you identify with any of these things that Stephen's going to share so maybe you could start sharing you know yeah. some of the abuses that took place so like i said whenever we dealt with the situation in 2019 with my former mentor there was like an, a spirit of exposure released and it began to expose things in me that I didn't have full understanding of that's still affecting me to this day. I mean, I'm 36 years old right now. Some of these things happened when I was a child, when I was a teenager, it's still affecting me to this day. So it's been amazing the journey that I've been on of he both healing and uh, deliverance. But as you know, Patricia, one of the number one spirits that comes after prophets is the spirit of Jezebel. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation, Revelation 2, that Jezebel seduces the servants of God to commit sexual immorality and also um, deals, she traffics in, in false doctrine, doctrine to demons. Um, there's another scripture, I believe it's 2 Kings 18, where it talks about her whoredoms and her sorceries mixed together. So I told you that as a teenager, I gave my heart to the Lord and I got filled with the Holy Ghost and the anointing for ministry instantly began to manifest. And I began preaching in my youth group um, as a 16 year old boy. Well, what happened was shortly before that, there was a, a new youth pastor and his wife and his family that came up from Miami, Florida at the church I had grown up in and, and I was at there in Alaska and they had come from a very broken past themselves. My youth pastor was a former gang member. He was saved out of a, of a rough background of gangs and violence and drugs. And his wife was actually a prostitute. She had become a prostitute at 12 years old uh, in the 1980s. 
uh, early 90s uh, in Miami, Florida. So they got saved out of that background and were only saved about nine months before they got thrust into full time ministry. I believe they got saved like out of the overflow of the Brownsville revival in Florida there and some of the, you know, some of the things that God was doing. Um, but they still had a lot of issues themselves. So what happened was they ended up coming to my church in Alaska and this lady developed a, a fascination with me. Uh, she began to uh, lust after me as, as a 16-year-old boy. And it was actually, the Lord's revealed to me, I've just gained understanding of this actually over the last year or so. It was actually a Jezebel spirit that came after me um, as a 16-year-old boy. But, you know, it's interesting, Patricia, Satan is very crafty, okay? He knows what he's doing. He's been tempting people. He's been, um, you know, he's been working on people for thousands of years. He knew okay, that he couldn't tempt me was, quote unquote, the normal hormonal temptations of a teenager growing up in America today, because I was actually on fire for God as a teenager. So mm -hmm. Satan knew that he had to spiritualize it somehow in order to, you know, get this temptation to be palatable for me. So what this woman did was she came to me, okay, and she said that she had a dream from the Lord. In the dream, she said that her husband died and I became her new husband. Now, there was already infatuation there on both sides. I was a young teenager that didn't know, you know anything you know, about this. Um, and as crazy as it sounds, looking back at it now, even talking about it, it sounds so crazy. But as a young man, I was deceived, and I felt that was the Lord. I even felt like the Lord confirmed it. She was a 31-year-old woman. Um, it was crazy. The Lord actually did save me before it went all the way. It was heading to the bedroom, okay? Um, but the Lord did save me out of it, and I just thank God for praying mothers, Patricia, because like I told you earlier, my mother is a godly woman. My mother's a prayer warrior, and she's a prophetess. She hears clear from the Lord, and she knew in her spirit that something was wrong. Even though I checked all the boxes, Stephen's going to youth group, Stephen's reading his Bible, Stephen loves the Lord. He's not doing drugs. He's not going to parties at school. I was checking all the boxes, but she knew in her spirit that something was wrong. So one day when I was gone, she tossed my room. Okay. She went and she found letters that this woman had written to me, gifts that this woman had given me. Um, um, and thing blew up. They ended up in the state actually. And the crazy thing is Patricia, is her dream actually did come to pass. My youth pastor died shortly after that um, of, of kidney failure, something crazy like kidney failure, which which broke my heart really um, when I learned of it because I did consider him my spiritual father as he recognized the calling on my life. He gave me preach in the youth group. Um, I served with him week in and week out for years. So it was all very, very devastating situation for me. Uh, as a young man. Um, but the Lord used the trauma of that. And instead of, and this was once again, just the grace of God, instead of me blaming God, instead of church, oh, the church is just evil, you know, God's, or, I actually didn't blame God for any of that. But I, I went hard after God after that. And it was really, I just needed that time with the Lord just to heal, just to, just to keep going. It was very and, and also, let me um, say this, is that um, there was real harsh reactions against you. In that, yeah. did, did you want to share some of that? Because that's hard on yeah, a teenager. The crazy thing is, what we what you and I went through with the case that we went through in 2019 that we saw was Satan oftentimes puts the blame on the victim, on victims that are victims of sexual misconduct or abuse in the church, which is really weird. It doesn't make any sense, but it, it's spiritual. And yes, even as a 16-year-old boy, even though she was a 31-year-old, okay, was completely responsible. Um, and she was in leadership. Uh, and she was in leadership, yes. A lot of the blame was put on me. A lot of my friends in the youth group blamed me. There were people in the church that blamed me labeled me as the young, you know, hormonal teenager that's going after the woman of God or whatever, um, which which is what I went through in 2019 helped me to see a lot of this stuff, actually. 
publicly. It exposed a lot of this stuff that had happened in my youth. And isn't it amazing, Patricia, the very thing that God delivers you from, he'll, he often ends up using you in that, giving you authority to set others free uh, from similar situations. And, and I believe that's what God did um, in 2019. But all that to say, Patricia, I learned that, you know, I, I just went back through and I looked at every relationship that I had with pastors and leaders going forward in the church, and all of them were broken relationships right up to the point I met you. And I realized that it all stemmed from that broken relationship with my youth pastor and his wife as a 16-year-old, 17-year-old boy. And so I threw and submit to inner healing. I had to forgive my youth pastor. I had to forgive, you know, fun mothers in my past that have allowed and I had to receive healing. And, and now that's one of the biggest things that it's just amazing that God's doing right now is God is restoring me to healthy relationships with leaders. And another thing I want to share, Patricia, is between 2018, really, and like just recently, I had a dream about in the night, okay, with demonic attack. Crazy, like months at a time. Like every night there's demons walking up in my room, talking to me. I mean, attacking me, assaulting me. I mean, there multiple times where I wake up, I can't breathe, having panic attacks. I ended up in the emergency room multiple times. Um, I would have whole parts of my body go numb suddenly as I'm sitting there. I mean, just crazy stuff. But since the Lord has, 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 has done this work in me, and I began this fresh work with you as an apostolic leader in my life. And, and once again, restoring not only relationship with leaders, but real covering because there's covering that comes from being in that proper relationship with leaders that is absolutely necessary. I believe even so much so uh, for profits. Um, I want to, I want to tell you, Patricia, like pretty much all of those attacks has ceased <laughs> since the Lord awesome. has done this work. And it's just, it's been amazing, but we need these relationships with leaders because covering it provides so many things, but Satan doesn't want that. He wants us to stay isolated through our issues, through not resolving our issues. And, um, you know, it's just been so amazing what God has done with me. Are these so thankful, Patricia? Wow. And when God was healing you, he also addressed other areas such as different connections you had in relationship with different yeah. people in the body. Can you share a little bit about that process? Yeah, well, you know, d during this process, okay, since 2020 to 2022, since I've been out here in Maricopa, the Lord gave me a very clear command. You must give yourself to wisdom. So I started memorizing a proverb every week, you know, from the scripture, a proverb or Ecclesiastes. And I started re reading books, you know, I read my books last year. And during the course of just learning and growing wisdom, I came across uh, some very, very insightful wisdom. One of these books I was reading was totally the Lord. But they, they, they said, if you're an unhealthy person, a lot of times you'll gravitate towards other unhealthy people. And if you're not careful in this, this, this ugly cycle of reinforcing your bad, forcing um, your, your, your bad attitudes and whatnot. So I realized that over the course of me carrying these wounds, these unresolved issues for years, I had actually gravitated towards other people that carried similar issues. So I just, I mean, once again, it's just the Lord, Patricia, exposing it all. But I just began to look at some of, not just some of the good things we shared, but some of the offenses that we shared. And there was people that I found myself in relationship with that had, we, we, we had shared offenses, toward, shared offenses towards certain people you know, in our particular stream. of, this. And I recognized that by the grace of God, and I had to address it. And another thing they said in this book is they said, if you're going to fulfill all call of God on your life, you have to find other people that are going the same direction. You stay, especially your inner circle. There's different levels of relationship, right? We have acquaintances, we have, sure. you know, but your inner circle, the people that you really give play to, to, uh, you know, uh, or speak into your life or influence, you, they have to be going the same direction. And that I was no longer going to go in those unhealthy directions. I was a health. I was going to be uh, in, 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 in healthy relationship with leaders. I was going to be in the body of Christ. And, and ultimately that I'm going to 
fulfill my call. And I just knew that if I kept going that same direction, I wasn't fulfilling my call. And how many prophet or how many anointed people we've met it's so sad i mean that's these things it grieves me it's the potential they never realize the calling that's never fulfilled because they allow their issues you know so yes Patricia, to answer your question i had to i had to hard at the people that i had allowed into my inner circle and i had to change my inner circle which was really hard because these people i i really loved and i really yeah. relied on you know but it's like the story with Abraham and Lot. You know, Lot's eyes were fixed on the plains of Sodom, and that wasn't in Abraham's heart, so they had to split. They had to part, and it was the Lord that did it. So we all have to come to those times in our relationships if we're going to yeah. fulfill the call of God on our lives. I can feel so much anointing on this right now that I feel like there's a number of you that are watching that are saying, oh, my goodness, Lord, you've been speaking to me about some of the people that I'm in relationship with. And we do have to be so careful, um, no matter if we're a prophet or not, but especially if if you're a prophet, you have to be very careful that you don't house offense. Uh, offenses like poison, there are five transgressions inside of offense. And so when a prophet yeah. starts getting the, the bitter poison of offense in their spirit, even if they were to deliver an accurate prophetic word, it would be tainted with an offense that would misrepresent yes. God. And so it's so, so important. I know that a number of you are going to be making some decisions in this next while to really look at your relationships that you have, because some of yes. them you might have to, you might have to put some distance there and make sure that you have healthy relationships who believe in, in Jesus, his love, his truth, his compassion, his mercy, you know, his, 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 his righteousness. And uh, so that you can walk with others of like nature. So, so very important. Well, I remember um, when we were going through, you know, this season that there were some tensions between us. One of the things I remember saying to you often was like, John was a son of thunder who wanted to call down fire from heaven and consume them. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit, spirit you're of. I didn't come to judge, but to save. But then yeah. we see that same John in the book of Revelation, known by all of us today as the apostle of love. Yeah. He is the one that God actually chose to bring weighty words to the church. So yeah. it's not that there, there, there aren't words of judgment that are coming forth. There are words of judgment that are coming forth. Yeah. Um, but we, we have to make sure that we're not a son of thunder instead of, instead of an apostle of love, right? And yeah. um, God's going to choose those. John had his breast or his, his, his head on the breast of Jesus, and he heard Jesus' heartbeat, not just his words, but his heart for the people of God. And that's who God chose, the one who was broken in that, the one who was known for his love. And yeah. I believe that we're going to need more voices in these coming days to raise the bar. But if they, there's offense inside of them, we, we have lost, we have lost everything. We've misrepresented yeah. the Lord. And so I believe God's doing this work in you and in others and in, in, in all of us. I mean, I'm really having the Lord work in my own life right now. Even this morning when we were at prayer meeting and we were in worship, I just I just felt the Lord, you know, reveal areas of pride in my life that just had to be laid out on the altar. We can't just hide, you know, our 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 stuff we, we've got to say lord you know just just change me transform me bring bring me to your mercy seat afresh and be honest with one another because we're to help each other right we're not to destroy each other we're to help each other and so um yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm so proud of you Stephen. i'm really really proud of you because you came through a lot in in your brokenness and your fears and and in all that happened to you, there was there was reactions to it that put you on a wrong path. But then when the Lord got your yeah. heart because you sought him, because you went to him and you bowed to to his dealings, you've come through like with pure gold. And it's just beautiful to see you. I believe your ministry has taken on a whole new um 
a whole new dimension, realm of anointing, God showing up in the meetings. And uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm serving Stephen as a covering for him right now, I've asked him to have those that he ministers to send me reports after his, his visit. And they're just glowing reports. And I'm just so, so happy, so blessed with what God's done in your life, but also the way that you're going to be able to, through your testimony of this journey that you've been yeah. on, been on help so many others identify it because unless we can identify it we can't really work with it but i would like to yeah. pray for those of you um i feel like a number of you are identifying in fact i was just talking to someone a couple weeks back that had a very similar testimony to you and they mm -hmm. were they were taken advantage of by a by a leader and and it and it it really um it really broke their call and I feel like there's a number of you, I feel like crying right now, actually. A number of you are watching right now that you're saying, that was me. And I've oh. lost all trust in leaders. And you've been bitter and you've been offended and you're hard, but you've got this beautiful call and God loves you so much. But it's like because of the woundedness, you just don't know what to do with it. And God's going to heal you. And I just want to encourage you to pursue healing. But Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, we just release your healing touch right now to their hearts. And Lord, as things are surfacing, even right now, Lord God, that you would just minister your healing touch into the very depths of their soul, into those memories, and that you would show them how to walk, walk it through and walk it out in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are a healer. You are everything to us, Jesus, and you're going to bring them through. And Lord, I just break the power of any assault of the enemy that's, that's harassed your called ones, Lord God, who has hurt them and wounded them, Lord God. But they're going to rise up strong because you're a redeemer and you're going to turn things around. And even if you've been a perpetrator in the past, probably because you're wounded, the, the uh, pastor, the youth pastor that he spoke of earlier, it was 12 years old when she was a prostitute. What caused that in her life? What woundedness caused that in her life? And so, Lord, we show mercy and love to those who have uh, been perpetrators and ask that you heal them and deliver them completely, that there had been be 100% repentance from anything any of us have, have transgressed in us, Lord, that we can be your, your pure ones that rise up in this hour. Now I feel I feel in my spirit, Stephen, that many of the people that we just prayed for, they need to be able to reach out and open things up a little bit more. Would you be willing if like if they could connect with you? Would absolutely. You to, absolutely. To, to pray for them more. So how can yeah. they get in touch with you? How would you like them to reach yeah, out? Yeah, well. The easiest way is is you can just message me on Facebook. Um, I, I I do run uh, our Facebook Messenger, and I, I do check all those messages personally. So message me on Facebook or email me at uh, Lion of Light Ministries at gmail .com. That's an easy way. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to pray with anybody or or help anybody in any way that I can that's dealing with similar situations. And and uh, one last thing. I want to say, Patricia, before we get off here, you think about tainted, like there's that prophetic anointing that gets tainted. And I just want to encourage everybody who's on the broadcast watching this. You need to remember Proverbs 4, where it says the key diligence for out of it flows the issues, the rivers of life. And the Bible says it's like the eternal life. It's like a fountain that's springing up within. And it really is like rich waters that we have to manage and flowing powerfully in terms of your prophetic gifting your prophetic unction your anointing but if it gets tainted uh it can it can it can compromise the entire worst of all it can misrepresent the heart of god and a prophet's number one responsibility is to represent the heart of god to the people um to 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 carry the heart uh to to the church and to the world so i just want to encourage everybody who's watching this it's a call right now to keep your heart with all diligence. And more than ever before, Patricia, there's so people have picked up so much offense online mm -hmm. and with involvement. Yeah. There's so many spirits that are vying 
thing for your heart. But if you're a prophet, and you're, your heart is supposed to be completely sanctified unto the Lord. And it should be him that moves your heart in the most profound way and have your real authority to begin with. So I just want to encourage everybody with that last word, Patricia, that's feeling in my spirit. So right on. Beautiful. And if people want to um, reach out to have you minister in their churches or, or their groups, how would they get in touch with you? The same um, uh, message on yeah. Facebook? Yeah, uh, you, can, you can message me. You can email me. You can also go to our website.org, and there's a contact form on, on there that you can fill out that you can uh, request, uh, you know, me to, to minister. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a new day. Hey, um, God's doing, God's doing it. So, um, yeah, I'd love to serve for wherever, uh, the body of Christ. So bless you. So, so your email is Stephen at line of light ministries.org. Well, uh, I prefer to just use the, the email one now line of light ministry sure. because uh, I've had some issues with that, that link, uh, lately. Okay. Um, so light ministries okay. all spelled out at gmail.com just you can message me on facebook too and I, I get all those as well so all right okay awesome yeah awesome well i want to make an announcement here um uh for those of you that would love to have uh some mentoring in the prophetic i am doing a training um, starting real soon, July the 12th, I think it is, um, we are starting a training in the prophetic. And so it'll be foundational training for the first couple months um, that will be a refresher for those of you that are already prophesying. But also starting in September every week, we're going to have uh, prophets, seasoned prophets come and give input and, and share uh, mentoring moments and impartation with you. And so these are very seasoned, well-known prophets that, that have said yes to uh, serving us. And so it is absolutely free. There's no charge for it. Uh, but you have to be a member of my web church because we want to put it under a covering where we can, you know, um, you know, pray for those that are taking the course and where we have pastors available to answer questions and things like that. So to join the web church, go to patriciaking.com. There's a tab there and uh, love to have you part of our web church. And uh, so this training is available for free to everyone in the web church, uh, but it is um, exclusive for the web church as well. Now, Stephen, you do training in the prophetic also. Yeah. And so you can go into churches, home groups, whatever, and, and do training. Um, uh, do you have any online coming up? Uh, I've developed actually a whole prophetic school. It got so big, I had to split it and it got uh, a, just a school of the prophetic and then my more advanced, which is school of the prophet developed. But I've been doing it in seminar, uh, seminar form. Uh, in I'm fixing to do another church next month. Um, so I'm doing it that way, developing it to put it online in a digital format um, currently right now. Um, so, yeah, just follow me on Facebook. Follow me here on social media. We also have a, a YouTube page. And I'll let you guys know whenever that's available online format. Um, but, yeah, Patricia's been very, very powerful into the prophetic. And just once again, looking at what the Bible has to say about the prophetic. And I feel like there's been an increase even in my own own life in ministry in the prophetic as as I've leaned into just growing in it you know the Bible has to say what the Bible teaches so it's been awesome um so yeah if 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 anybody wants to connect with me on that I would love to serve in that capacity so yeah I I just love real solid teaching on the prophetic where where once you get um you know connected to God in that way then you just keep on uh, going and growing and maturing and staying on track, not going to the right or the left, but keeping in the Amen. Lord, in his anointing, in his character, in his nature, in his goodness. Amen. And we can change the world. Amen. You know, we can create with God Amen. through the prophetic. So we highly recommend Amen. you getting trained. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, for being so open and vulnerable and for being who you are in the Lord, for for walking through this last season so beautifully and so proud of you and, uh, and keep up the good work and keep on prophesying. <laughs> God well, bless you all. Thank you for joining us for this conversation.